Hello, my name is Leo, and welcome to another reading of the Elder Scrolls. Today we're going to be reading Azure and the Box, Ancient Tales of the Dwemer, Part 11, by Maroba Soul. The final part in the Ancient Tales of the Dwemer series. At least, that has been written. There are other parts that don't exist in the game, or any of the games, or any of the lore, or anything, for that matter. Alright, let's begin. Uh, Chidabar, good enough. Chidabar had ex enjoyed an adventurous youth, but had grown to be a, a very wise, very old Dwemer who spent his life searching for the truth and dispelling superstitions. He invented much and created many theorems and logic structures that bore his name. Never heard his name before, but that's fine. <laughs> but much of the world still puzzled him. And nothing was a greater enigma to him than the nature of the Azura, sorry, the Adra and Daedra. Over the course of his research, he came to the conclusion that many of the gods were entirely fabricated by man and myrrh. Nothing, however, was a greater question to Naku Chidaba than the limits of divine power. Were the greater beings the masters of the entire world, or did the humbler creatures have the strength to forge their own destinies? As Tridabar found himself nearing the end of his life, he felt he must understand this last basic truth. Among the sages' acquaintances was a holy chime of priest named Athnic. When the priest was visiting, oh God, Bethelag Zumaz, Zumaz, Chidabar told him that he intended to do... He intended to... Sorry? <laughs> told him what he intended to do to find the nature of divine power. Athnic was terrified and pleaded with his friend not to break this great mystery. But Chidabar was resolute. Finally, the priest agreed to assist out of love for his friend though he, feel, he feared the results of this blasphemy. Athnic summoned Azura. After the usual rituals, rituals by which the priest declared his faith in her powers and Azura agreed to do no harm to him, Chidabar and a dozen of his students entered the summoning chamber, carrying with them a large box. It's just basically just going to be a Pandora's box, probably. Uh, who's talking? Chidabar. As we see you in our land, Azure, you are the goddess of the dusk and dawn and all the mysteries therein, said Jadaba, trying to appear as kindly and uh, mm, obsequious. <laughs> Can you do it? No. Yep, obsequious, good enough. As he could be. It is said that your knowledge is absolute. So it is, smiled the Daedra. You would know, for example... What is in this wooden box? said Chinaba. What is this a Schrodinger's cat situation? As you turned to Athnic, her brow furrowed. The priest was quick to explain. Ah, oh, goddess, this Dwemer is a very wise and respected man. Believe me, please, the intention is not to mock your greatness, but to demonstrate it to this scientist and to the rest of his sceptical race. I have tried to explain your power to him, uh, but his philosophy is such that he must see it demonstrated. If I am to demonstrate... Wait, that's not her voice. <laughs> if I am to demonstrate my might in any way to bring the Dwemer race to understanding, it might have been more impressive feat. Uh, what? It might have been a more impressive feat you would have me do. Growled Azura and turned to look at Chinabar in the eyes. There is a red petaled flower in the box. Chinabar did not smile or frown. He simply opened the box and revealed to all that it was empty. Wait, what? When the students turned to look to Azura, she was gone. Only Athnic had seen the goddess's expression before she vanished, and he could not speak. He was trembling so. A curse had fallen. He knew that truly. 
but even crueler was the knowledge of divine power that had been demonstrated. Chalabar also looked pale, uncertain on his feet, but his face shone with not fear but bliss. The smile of a dwemer finding evidence for a truth not only suspected. Sorry, a truth only suspected. Two of his students supported him, and two more supported the priest as they left the chamber. I have studied much over the years, performed countless ex- Wait, who's talking? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm really not sure who's talking. Um, I'm going to go with China, but... I have studied much over the years, performed countless experiments, taught myself a thousand languages, and yet the skill that has taught me to finally... The skill that has taught me the finally truth, final truth, is the one that I learned when I was but a poor young man, trying only to have enough gold to eat, whispered the sage. Okay, so he tricked the goddess. As he was escorted up the stairs to his bed, a red flower petal fell from the sleeve of his voluminous robe. Charlie but died that night. Oh, a portrait of peace that comes from contented knowledge. So he, he tricked. Yeah, he did. Great. Publisher's note. This is another tale whose origins is unmistakably drama. Again, the words of some Aldermaris translations are quite different, but the essence of the story is the same. The Dunma have a similar tale about Chalabar. Uh, but in the Dunma version, Azura recognizes the trick and refuses to answer the question. She slays the Dunma present for their skeptic- skepticism and curses the Dunma for blasphemy. Okay. In the Aldrimeris version, Azura is tricked not by an empty box, but by a box containing a spear, a sphere, which somehow becomes a flat square. Of course, the Aldrimeris version, being a few steps closer to the original Dwemer, are much more difficult to understand. Perhaps this stage magic explanation was added by Gore Flem because of Flem's own experience with such tricks in his plays when a mage was not available. Marobar's soul left even the character of Trialabar alone, and he represents many Dwemer virtues. His skepticism, while not nearly as absolute as in the Adramaris version, is celebrated even through, even though it brings a curse upon the Dwemer and the unnamed house of the poor priest. Whatever the true nature of the gods, and how right or wrong the Dwemer were about them, this tale might explain why the Dwemer the dwarves vanished from the face of Tamriel, though, uh, though Chilomar and his kind may not have intended to mock the Azura, the Adra, and Daedra, their skepticism certainly offended the divine orders. Well, that was Azura and the Box, Ancient Tales of the Dwemer, Part 11 by Maroba Sal. Have you enjoyed reading the series? I have. It's not the best thing in the game, but it's, it's, it's alright, it's alright, it's alright. Uh, anyway, um, on a final note, uh, my theory, which I've talked about in the playthrough, and I've read, is that the Dwemer disappeared simply because they, similar to this, well, not similar to this, but they learned the truth. The truth being that, uh, the Dwemer and all of Tamriel are fictional characters in a video game. And, uh, they were like, well, fuck me, and they all just zero end. Well, we'll do another book reading uh, in the future. But for now, my name is Leo and I'll see you next time.